Welcome to the uh, latest episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio, uh, where we finally get to talk about Doctor Who again, and with the second half of the season, of uh, season, wow, five, five, six? Six. 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 I can't remember. Um, season six, um, with Let's Go Hitler. Um, I am your host, Davey Beauchamp. To the right of me is... I'm so very, very tired. Clayton Wick, and... I'm not so much tired, but slightly drunk, and Jason Butera. Yes. Okay. We're since we we just did an interview with Jason here, and it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but it was an awesome interview. I had a blast. Um, we'll jump right in. What did you like about this episode, Clayton? Uh, I like Hitler got punched in the face by Rory. That's like that's probably that might be the high point in the season thus far. Nice. What about you? The high part of the season in the first episode? Well, this is just the half season. Oh, true. Yeah. Damn it. That's very good. Um, as far as this episode, I mean, everything, I mean, I mean, Rory punching, or somebody punching Hitler in the face. Do we have spoiler sense? No, no. I mean, most people that are going to watch this have seen the episode. Excellent. Um, I mean, Rory punching Hitler in the face... Everything with River Song. I mean, everything I thought I knew about Alex Kingston as an actress, everything I thought about I knew the character of River Song, pretty much got circumvented, just flipped around, shoved inside and outside, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey into a big ball, and now I have no idea what to expect. And it was brilliant because I expect nothing less from Stephen Moffat. It, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the episode. Um... It has the best title ever for yeah, an episode ever. It does. Let's kill Honestly, Hitler. Let's I, kill Hitler. What can you do with that episode? You can do anything and everything yeah. with it. Anything. And I, I think that's the thing I liked about this episode the most was the title. Because it was very misleading. Because it, it was no, really no one kills amazing. Hitler. It should have been called Let's Punch Hitler. <laughs> yes. Or Let's Bitch Slap Hitler. Yeah. So what did we not like about the episode? I thought that they introduced a lot of really complex elements regarding the nature of River and then immediately discarded them all in the same episode. It seems like there's a lot of material there that they could have used for entire seasons worth of episodes that they just sort of introduced and then immediately got rid of, especially the whole aspect of her regenerations. I don't, I don't think they got rid of them so much as Stephen Moffat's probably going to bring them up like three years from now in some very weird, clever thing that's not going to make anybody happy unless they remember what happened three years ago. Yeah, but that's not a good thing. Well, no, no, it, it's certainly not a good thing, but I mean, it, it's what Stephen Moffat is good at doing, is, is, is dropping these hints and dropping these clues and bringing up stuff that comes up in a 60-minute episode that all of a sudden doesn't get addressed for two or three years afterwards. And, like, he drops these, these weird little subliminal, nominal, you know, behind-the-scenes sort of hints that you actually, you actually have to look and pick up on, which you don't even realize that you should have to look and pick up on until you see it three years later and you realize everything you had just watched and all these little, like, these little droppings and nominations and machinations and adumbrations and everything else form this plot that he's going to bring up five years from now when no one's going to remember anything. And that's part of why I hate Stephen Moffat, is because he makes me think. And I don't want to think when I watch the telly. I don't. <laughs> I think the thing I, I didn't like most about this episode is that Mel's was just thrown in there. there was no, there's been no hint of her up until now. And like you were saying, Moffat's so good about dropping these hints and these these things that come up later. That I, she, it why why not bring Mel's into it when the Doctor regenerates? Like the whole Geronimo thing when he crash lands in Amy Pond's backyard. Why not have Mel's having a sleepover that night? Or something. If he There's... thought about it that far. Yeah. And I think he probably did. I just, I don't know. Maybe something happened with the episode, with this episode where he decided to, inter I don't know. That's the thing I didn't like. Moffat's so good about dropping hints. This one just came out of nowhere. It seemed more like a cool idea he had that he just sort of put in there without... Yeah any further examination or thought. Exactly. Which isn't necessarily bad, it's just that I think we've been trained to expect more at this point. Yeah, because he's not Davies. He's not writing fanfic. No, it's very true. Uh, he's, he takes the stories much more seriously, he does a lot more with them, and it just, it just seemed out of nowhere. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the character, I like how she, you know, that she's River and stuff like that, and how she played a very important or part. Or is she a character that's going to come back later... Like, next year. Like, Mel's will show up. 
It's possible. Somehow. I mean, I, I mean, she's she's been around long enough. Or I mean, anything's possible. Yeah. But it would have been nice if we would at least seen that character at the wedding. I mean, I would like to go back and just take a look at the wedding. Is she, she in the wedding? In there? Not that I can, not that I remember. Did you that watch it frame by frame? Not yet. Okay. It's gonna happen. I'm just saying, like, if you watched no, it frame by frame and you could absolutely rule her out as being in the secondary background scene. They acknowledged that she wasn't really there yeah. though, with all the references the doctor made to how she just seemed sort of out of place and suddenly there. Yeah. So. It's like Moffat knew himself that he was really cheating and he had to acknowledge that or else the audience wouldn't follow him along for it. Which is true. I, I definitely see that. And I think he does acknowledge that this was kind of like, ooh, this is a cool idea, let me do it. Or I think maybe something happened that caused him to have to go this route. You know, it's one of those things we're going to have to see how it plays out. Though, of course, I think this also sort of gives River, the character, an expiration date. It, it does. I don't see how she could. But the, but there's so much you can do with that. With the big the big giant ball of wibbly wobbly. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, we've had the doctor show yeah. up at 904, and we've had him show up at 1170. I mean, yeah. we have him show well, up. Well, the doctor lies about his age. Well, I mean, yeah. he lies, but we also have him show up at multiple ages. He doesn't yeah. realize what's happened, but he does realize what's happened yeah. because he set it up six years in a van. I mean, like it's. But the thing is, is they've I always hate time travel yeah. shows. Yes, but the thing they they've already said is that they're they're going like this in their timelines. True. We've already seen her die. Which is why she's the old lady with the eye patch. She isn't the old lady with the eye patch. No, no, that is dumb. She is she is not no. the old lady with the eye patch. She is the old lady with the eye patch. It's not dumb. Yeah, she's, she's not. I hate to tell you. I almost want to give you a hug about it, but I yeah, know. it's 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 not what's going to happen. I just wanted to be her because that makes it. Well, simple. I mean, I mean, and I think a lot of people are, are are thinking that, especially because in the in one of the teasers they show River with the eye patch on the right side. Yeah, same exact side. Same Ex really. But the thing is, I think there there's some sort of control thing going on there. I'm sure that'll work out great for you, but I'll be proven right in like a year. Uh huh. Yeah. I hate to tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I have to feel better about myself, damn it, as a nerd. Yes, but I i mean, a, a lot of people thought that for a long time until they actually named the character. What's that name? A name is a lot in the show. True, true. And so far, all of Rivers, Mel's, and Mel's. Melody, they, What's the names of. Name? What? Pirate Lady Eyepatch. Um, I can't remember, but it's like Professor or Doctor or something with this really bizarre name. It probably translates to like River. No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Because she was actually shocked when she got a name because she thought she was going to be a one-off character. Um, and because she was only in the, was supposedly going to be in the first half, but he liked the character so much he's bringing her over into the second half of the season. Gotcha. She's not her. I know you want her to be River. I want it so bad. But uh, it's not gonna happen. I know. I know because I mean, it may we we know how River dies. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what does it. She doesn't age past a certain point. They've already killed her before. But we'll see. <laughs> um. We're losing momentum. Yeah, I, I just but, yeah. yeah, just a little. I kind of I kind of got I hit a speed bump there with what I was gonna say. Um, what else did you think about the episode? I mean, high points, low points, um, anything. Other than the fact that you have an episode called "Let's Kill Hitler," and after the fact that Rory just bitch smacks him six ways from a sugar fly Sunday, we don't see Hitler anymore. I kind of like that there is this robot full of tiny people that travels throughout time and writes wrongs on people who are already dead. It's just Well, if, so if, if, the time Lord, if the Time Lords do what they do, what are the tiny people and the robots? Like, who it's, or what are it's they? It's just so stupid and so exactly what someone would do if they had time travel. Time cops? Yeah, I mean that's basically what they were. They they were that's what that's what I gathered them to be. They basically punish those that don't get punished. Yeah, but who was controlling them? An agency of some sort. Because they said that was a time that was a, a run by a, the lady with the eye patch. Who's actually? I don't think she's no because no, it's a completely different group because yeah. they consider River to be a war criminal. Yeah, of course they do. And they actually consider that other group 
as criminals too because they basically said what what is science it's actually not a species like we thought they're just the the grays are just part of this organization or this religion because what threw me what finally hit me when when we watched the um the first sort of part of this because i consider the last half of last season a good man goes to war as the first part of this two-part arc of story the silence they don't speak and the thing is is we know the headless monks are extinct at one point because if you go to that museum episode they basically say the order's dead they were they were killed out oh one thing i really liked about the episode actually was God what damn you did it with i like what the doctor <laughs> did what the, what the doctor did with his last three minutes of life given a chance to ask questions about his personal timeline all that he really wants to know is how things were supposed to end What's up with the silence just because he doesn't want to go out not knowing? Yeah. He has absolutely no way of impacting his fate from that point on. He plans on dying. He deliberately misleads River so that she won't even try to use up her regenerations to save him. And in the end, all he wants to know is what was up with those guys he never managed to catch. <laughs> yeah. And the question, what is the question? Do you have any idea what the question might be? 42? That would be the answer. Damn it. Well, yeah, I was, I was thinking that. But any idea what the question might be? No idea. See, I don't want it to be so obvious as that it's who's the doctor, because I could almost see that being the question. But I think, I hope they go for the more esoteric who thing. Who is the doctor? Yeah, who's the doctor? But I want it, I want it to be more something more esoteric, well, you know, well, what's life? Why, why is there create? You know, I want the bigger picture, the bigger question. But I really hope well, they could, don't... Could the bigger question just be one word? I mean, couldn't you just have why? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want not, it not, to not, be. Not, not something so specific like, who is a doctor? Yeah. I mean... But, I, but the thing is, I could see, unfortunately, as much as I love Moffat, I could see him choosing that out. No, he wouldn't do that. If it was Davies, I would say yes, definitely. Nah, Moffat wouldn't do it. If, if he was going to do it, he would have thought of it six years ago, and some you would have heard about it by now. Um, unless, of course, you know, it's going to fall back into about, you know, time, something with time travel, Omega, you know. Because the only people that actually know how time travel even started, at least with the Time Lords, are the dialects and a handful of Time Lords. True. I mean, there's there's so many possibilities of what this question Omega. could be. And, you know, I... And I think it all falls back to the destruction of the TARDIS and who destroyed the TARDIS. I think this all ties back into the destruction of the TARDIS and it would take somebody of immense power to destroy the TARDIS. And the only person I could think of that has come back time and time again that's strong enough to destroy TARDIS... Don't say it! Is, no, Omega. I'm not going to say the Master because the, the, the Master wouldn't do it. Because he still needs a TARDIS. Because we still have no idea what happened to the Master's TARDIS. No. We never saw it, did we? No, we have not seen it yet. I mean, I would like to think it's going to tie into, you know, that, that classic, you know, the, the place where it all starts. And because we have Rossalon time-locked right now, the only other one is Omega. And they brought about... They had Omega in the Three Doctors, then they had Omega in a Peter Davison episode. And I have not seen that Peter Davison episode in a very long time, so I don't remember what happened to so Omega in that one. I haven't seen that one either. Um, I know I saw it back in the day, I just don't remember it. I want to see what happens in that episode, because I, I really do think that Moffat is leading us back to... It, I think he's leading us back to the resur resurrection of the Time Lords. And Gallifrey and everything else. I think there need to be a little bit more set up, though. I think he's a little yeah. bit too good of a writer to just yeah. spring Omega on an audience that hasn't seen the character yeah. in 20 years. That, that's the reason why I'm saying I think... So he's going to start it now and spring it in 2012 and then... Or yeah, 2013. 2013. Definitely. Well, yeah, I, mean, I mean, spend 2012 dropping all these hints yeah. and once 13 rolls around when you have that anniversarial yeah. you know, date set... Because it's a complete reboot of the entire franchise. It's going to last another fifty years. Because one thing that 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 Moffat has definitely pointed out in more than one episode that they rebooted the universe, oh. and that doesn't mean 
we don't we don't know if the, if the time war still happened in the rebooted universe. He has not made mention of that. Because now, in the repeated universe, the first time Rory was ever on the TARDIS is on their wedding night. Which means all those other adventures they had together... Well, those adventures still happen. They acknowledge them as happening. But not with this Rory. Yeah, but not with this Doctor and not with this Amy. Exactly. So that doesn't mean exactly... We still don't know if the time war happened. Because Moffat has said everything's kind of... The time war happened. Yeah, it definitely happened. It had to have happened. Yeah, but we don't know if everybody's still time locked anymore. That's the thing. Oh, we don't yeah. we don't know what the repercussions are in Moffat's rebooted universe. There are gonna be consequences. Because the thing is, is in the old timeline, the Cybermen were t wiped out totally. They were ultimately wiped out. No longer existed. In this rebooted universe Nothing is ever wiped out totally. Yeah. But in this rebooted universe we have the Cybermen back. Yes. The non cyber cyber cybermen. Yeah. So we're seeing repercussions little by little of what happened with this reboot. Hmm. Which I which I think you know, we still have to wait and see where it takes us, because that means, you know, Gallifrey could be out there right now and we just haven't seen it yet. Well, yeah, but I mean, they, they tried to bring back, you know, uh, anachronistic temporal aspects of Gallifrey before Tenet regenerated. Yeah, but the I whole, mean... Like, we, like, where we had, like, where we had James Bond as, like, the Time Lord Senate yeah, president but we had, time, But I had to say, we had a crappy fanfic writer. We had a which crappy fanfic horrible. writer. He's yeah. like, we're going to pull Gallifrey and Senators through this little thing and pull them back. Like, it, was that, like, it was like Time Lord fishing. Yeah. And I, it sucked. Like I said, but now that we have Moffat, I mean, I'm curious about how he sees the Doctor Who universe. We know he but, can... But why do we have the Senate, like the Senate Pro Tem, like the Time Lord Senate Pro Tem locked in one little pocket that the Master was able to activate through his, you know, his interactions with them, but then yeah. they disappeared, nothing ever happened, and all of a sudden he's, we still come back to the only, the one Time Lord left. Like, well, we, no, we no, keep, no. We keep circumventing you know, everything. You know, the thing is, is all the face of Bo ever said was, you are not alone. Because you cannot tell me that the Rani said, I'm going to go help the Time Lords fight this war. She hated the Time Lords. I mean, the face of Bo is not the character of credibility. It's Captain Jack, for See, fuck's sake. I still don't believe that's Captain Jack. It is so, Captain Jack. How I, can you not trust him? Because Davies wrote it. I don't, I don't trust anything Davies writes that is not Torchwood specific. Torchwood, the dude, is a Which genius. Is in, so it's one of those anagrams for, for, for doctors. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. I just, I don't think that... That's the only reason he wrote Torchwood was to have something else to do Doctor Who stuff with. And gay sex. <laughs> yeah, but that's a whole other issue that I have with Torchwood right now. Um, but I don't know. I just... No, my problem is, is Jack's supposed to be omnisexual? <laughs> He's, he's supposed to be have sex with anything that moves. Oh yeah. That, but that, they that just point. totally gave him up way too much. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, he's he's just all into the gay right now, and it's really bothering me because they've <laughs> they've unwritten the the Captain Jack that we've known and loved for so long. Um, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> okay, we've wandered onto the subject of gay sex. I think it might be a good idea to just call it a night. Yes. <laughs> Maybe he's in one of his moods. <laughs> when am I not in one of my moods? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, any final words, thoughts, or feelings about this episode of Let's Kill Hitler? Best episode title in the history of things ever being titled ever in the history of stuff. Kill Hitler. Just, just kill Hitler. But he's dead. That's, that's why they have time travel. <laughs> But that's, that's Killing one of the, Hitler is why time travel was invented. That's one of those great existential type of questions. Like, if you could go back in time and kill Hitler, would you? Like, that's one of that's one of those great. Uh, that's one of the most classical questions from the twentieth century. No, it is. If a you race. could go back in time and kill Hitler, would you? It well, is yeah, a... absolutely. Well, if you killed Hitler, then what would happen? Like, and it, it sets up time travel questions. Like, what Russell Davies did was take a hypothetical question that everyone has asked ever since nineteen thirty eight on, and they've asked it about every single. Shit. That yeah, but no, just, no, it's it, a race. The idea is everyone who's ever gotten a time machine 
kills Hitler. What we're looking at right now well, is, oh God, is that's just awesome. the current high score. That it's is not just brilliant. Hitler. Everyone, take whatever time it is. If you could go back and kill Napoleon Bonaparte, if you could go back and kill, like, I'm, I guarantee you, Mongolian sitting around before this is a Circle K ever invented asked, if we could go back and kill Genghis Khan, would we do it? In a fucking heartbeat. Like, every single bad guy in history, no matter what sort of temporal, cyclical realm we're talking about, if you could go back and kill the bad guy, would you? Yes, absolutely. Because that's one of the great existential questions is, if you as a good guy could kill the bad guy, would you? Yeah, but, but the thing is, that's not the game. It's sort of like how nobody... No, it's ever, not the game, but it's a question. Well, nobody ever plays Six Degrees of Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> nobody did. Yeah, I did it, is, I did it you're, several years ago. Well, okay, most people don't do okay. it. Okay. I mean, you can, but it's a variant rule. The idea is you're that's supposed to go out you there, play it. and you're supposed to kill Hitler, because that's the way the game is played. See, I think I'm the only person that wouldn't that's do That's not the way it. the game is played, that's the way the question is asked. No, there would is, you kill Hitler? No, there is no... Not moral, how would you kill there, Hitler? No, it's there, would you kill Hitler? There is no moral quandary here. It is Hitler. He's the no, freebie. No, there is no moral quandary. Yeah, but you on who you ask. I wouldn't do it. It depends entirely on who... If you... I mean, you could ask somebody... That, you could ask, like... If you ask Stephen Hawking, would you go back and kill? Would it happen if you killed Hitler? And then you question is at what point do you kill Hitler? I mean, no, there's no, what, what? How have you not learned this from Doctor Who? The answer is it's okay. It all works out in the end. If you successfully kill Hitler, it's because you always killed Hitler. No, because Hitler, Hitler's Hitler death killing, wasn't time locked or time stamped. Yeah, no. if you fail at killing Hitler, okay, no harm. No, no. no. What, no. what the this, question is? You have, to, you have to bring Ray Richards' theory of time of time oh, travel. Bring the Fantastic Four into this. Yes, because what would really Shit. happen is if you went back in time and killed Hitler, you would create a divergent timeline in which in which you killed Hitler. Why the other? But how do you know that Hitler, Hitler surviving was an already a divergent timeline? And if that happens, then. Still, no harm, no foul. Exactly. You we're lose talking... nothing by killing so Hitler. So Hitler's, Hitler's, Hitler's We're talking living. about Hitler's infinite timelines of, of killing Hitler and not killing Hitler at various stages in his life. What this title boils down to is if a tree falls in the woods and no one is and you, no one is there to hear anyone It is your Hitler, job to put Hitler it, it, under that tree. <laughs> well, no, if, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, did anybody kill Hitler? Yes. Someone what is the sound of one Hitler. hand clapping killing Hitler? You're quiet now, aren't you? Cut! <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to turn it into a masturbation joke. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off. Until next...